Here is an interesting detail that I have run into in the Steinway M that I'm working on from 1927. And um, the detail emerges in selecting new parts and the parts that I am uh, about to use are obel parts, um, in this case from Brooks Limited. And um, I've been told that the parts, these particular slant hill parts were designed by Wally Brooks uh, back in 1989 or something. So they have fit a lot of pianos, but this particular M uh, has a layout that places the capstan. I don't know if I can get this so you can see it, but two millimeters too far back on the whipping cloth. <clears throat> the spread is right. The parts regulate perfectly. Uh, except for this. Um, and the way I know it is by the workaround that I've created for it. Um, they also weigh off properly. So it's clear that the geometry was correct on this piano. It wasn't an aberration. And, um, <clears throat> uh, and having to do with the length of the keys and the layout of the the keyboard, I'm sure. Um, but anyway, here is the original weapon sitting on top of the replacement weapon. And uh, you can see there's a, a very good match. The height is, uh, is right, even though the flange is slightly different. The scallop is in the right place relative uh, to the center pin and the, and the width of the flange is correct. This is not true on all parts that have been available to us. Um, the uh, repetition lever balancer, you know, is the right length in the right position, post is in the right place, the jack tip, uh, and tender are in the right place. In fact, when regulated, um, the jack tip in the new parts comes out right smack on the scribed line for pre-setup. Anyway, the original parts are 66 millimeters from the whip center, um, the flange center, to the middle of of where the capstan strikes the um, whip and heel cloth. Whereas in the new parts, it's 68 millimeters. So, you know, cutting it off and moving it, I'd have to shim it back to the right height. It wouldn't be as stable, maybe. It'd be a heck of a lot of work. Uh, I'd have to take things apart in order to cut it off. It would just be a huge uh, palaver. And it has to end up being stable and consistent. Anyway, what I found was that a piece of jute, um, you know, it's a kind of string made of organic material, and it, it has texture to it that has the benefit of gripping when inserted. And um, I've applied uh, low viscosity super glue to the tip, flattened it out with some pliers, clipped it so that it has a bit of a point. And anyway, this makes it possible to insert it um, where there is no glue between the cloth and the undercloth. And the result is a little odd looking perhaps, but it creates a new profile. Okay, so it's made the heel 
slightly taller. But it makes the heel so that it contacts the capstan in a way that has the correct slide path and, and reduces the friction from when it's contacting uh, this heel back toward the flange, um, it's got a, a whole bunch of extra friction to overcome. Uh, and, uh, and it's because there's a, a significant uh, tilt to the capstan. So yeah, I could, I could get straight heel capstans and I could uh, plug, pull these ones out, plug, redrill, but it's very tricky to get that to all come out in exactly the place that you want, you know, even when you know exactly where you want it. Um, so anyway, this little workaround, um, I think is, is just a thing. It's, it's a bit of extra work, but, um, makes the parts, um, uh, essentially work perfectly. And please like, subscribe, or follow the link in the notes to my website.